Is loving God our number one priority? This is our reflection question for today. Holy Spirit, make my heart open to the Word of God. Make my heart open to goodness. Make my heart open to the beauty of God. A woman bought a parrot in a pet store. She wanted companionship, someone to talk with. The next day, she returned to the store and said, He won't talk. The store manager asked, Does he have a mirror in his cage? Parrots love mirrors. She bought a mirror and left. The next day, she came back and said, The bird is still not talking. How about the ladder? Parrots love ladders. When he is happy, he will talk. She bought a ladder and left. The next day, she was back complaining that even with the mirror and ladder, the bird was not talking. The manager said, I know what you need. The bird wants a swing. He'll be happy when he has a swing and he'll talk. She reluctantly bought a swing and left. Sure enough, the next day, she was back. She had a sad face. The parrot died. She said, I'm sorry, the manager said. Please tell me, did he ever say anything before he died? The woman replied, Yes. In a weak voice, he asked me, Don't they sell any food at that pet store? Moral of the story, sometimes we forget the main thing. After buying the parrot, everything, you know, she bought a mirror, a ladder, a swing. She forgot to buy him food. In today's Gospel reading, in Matthew chapter 10, verse 34 to chapter 11, verse 1, Jesus said to his apostles, Do not think that I have come to bring peace upon the earth. I have come to bring not peace, but sword. For I have come to set a man against his father, a daughter against her mother, and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. Whoever loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. People might find it confusing to hear Jesus say that he came to set man against his father and daughter against her mother. Drawing comparisons from the fourth commandment, honor thy father and thy mother, one might think that Jesus is trying to trivialize the commandment. One might even think that Jesus was being extremely exclusive and inflexible. Obviously, this is not the case at all. It came to a better understanding when, on August 19, 2007, Pope Benedict told pilgrims gathered in the courtyard of his summer residence at Castel Gandolfo that true peace, the peace of Jesus, is not free from division. The Holy Father was preparing to Luke chapter 12, verses 51 to 53, St. Luke's version of today's Gospel reading. Pope Benedict, aware that this passage can be hard to understand, explained it further. He said that this expression of Christ means that the peace he has come to bring is not synonymous with the simple absence of conflict. Anyone who wishes to follow Christ will experience opposition. While the love of parents is a sacred commandment, he explained that love must be authentic and can never be set above the love of God in Christ. The Pope pointed out that Jesus was not trying to discount love for one's parents, but rather having Jesus as the pinnacle, the guiding compass of our lives. We will in fact honor and love our parents because God is the source of love and life for all humanity. Therefore, the focus of our worship is not our parents or any other human being, but rather the true author of life, which is God. Having it framed this way, people's misconception or confusion about it will be quashed, and it will be made clear that 
loving Jesus as the head of the body of Christ, which all of us are a part of, including our parents, brothers, sisters, and even our enemies, makes us participants in a power and grace that transcends or rises above whatever worldly relationship can ever provide. Just like in our parrot story, let us not forget the main thing. Loving God first will show us how to love others, especially our parents. Let us pray. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our loving Father, please fill our hearts with sincere love. A love that will put you first in our hearts so that others may benefit from that love. Give us the grace to realize that loving you first will allow us to share your love which is selfless, impartial, truthful, and fruitful. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless your families. God bless our Catholic faith and couples for Christ.